the stands, but because I serve the ultimate chief, not not these Kansas Kansas City chief. But anyway, I serve the chief shepherd. That's the that, 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 And if that chief can't get all your praise, if you can give the other chief more praise than you give that chief, then you got a problem. Plus, y'all will be disappointed anyway. And so that's me. I'm just saying. I tell you what, if the Chiefs win, I'll be 15 minutes next Sunday. That's a, why the hold it to it? If the Chiefs win, you get a 15 minute sermon next Sunday. That's how confident I am in the Broncos. My confidence. You can write it down. I tell you, if the Chiefs win, y'all will be in and out of here next Sunday in one hour. If they win. Some of y'all gonna be praying they win, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all yeah, bowing down to uh, uh, what's the coach name? Andy Reid. To the God of Andy Reid, we come to you. <laughs> and you would meet me this morning in the book of Jonah. In the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah. And I want to begin reading around verse number one. Uh, verse number one. I'm going to give you a word and we're going to go and get some chicken. Amen. Good to see you. Uh, Mr. Jerry Jonah is our man. Uh, in the back. Raise your hand one more time, Mr. Jonah. That Mr. Jonah is responsible for putting me in my nice vehicles that I drive. Uh, he is. Uh, he is. He works over at Superior Volvo, and he and I have built a great relationship over the past two and a half years. Mr. Jonah and I come in and talk with him and he tries to put me in different cars every time I come in. Uh, even if I just bought a car last week, he tried to get me to trade that one in for a new one. I said, look, I'm not buying another mansion for you. I'm just not going to do it. And we, we've talked and talked and talked over the last two and a half years and so finally he said, you know, uh, he said, Pastor Miller, we're going to come uh, this Sunday. Right. He, said, uh, he said, my wife's out of town, I'm a bachelor this weekend, so I'm coming. <laughs> and every time I see him, he go, have you finally got an anchor yet? And I said, an anchor? Uh, my, Jesus is my anchor. Yeah, my, my, my soul is anchored. He said, no, not that kind of anchor. No, not that kind of anchor. He said, the anchor that, 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 that makes sure you don't leave the house at certain times of the night is the anchor that <laughs> tells you what you can and can't do. I said, keep praying for me, keep praying for me. Uh, but it's good to have him with me. Okay. Great guy. Uh, if you ever need to buy a vehicle, he'll give you 80% off any car. <laughs> when I left the other day, I did see that S550 y'all had on the lot. See me after service. Because <laughs> why do you get excellent credit? He don't get it. Jonah chapter 1 and verse number 1. <laughs> Jonah chapter 1 and verse now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down to the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, had laid down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose call this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? 
What is your country and of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more temptuous. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to land, but they could not. For the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life. And do not charge us with innocent blood for you. O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Verse number 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Is that in your Bible? Amen. Uh, this morning, uh, I want you to continue to part something, whatever number we are holding. Uh, somebody said 17. <laughs> According to the scriptures, uh, Jonah in the belly of the whale. You may be seen. Amen. You all know that our main text has come from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 4. When the Bible says that Jesus, he died, he was buried and raised again the third day according to the scriptures. I've been going over this for several weeks now showing you how types in the Old Testament demonstrate or add validity to uh, that which Paul made, the claim that Paul made. Uh, that Jesus Christ, in fact, rose from the grave the third day according to the scriptures. Being that Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 15 and the New Testament has not yet been penned, has not been written, he was referencing the Old Testament scriptures. Now, uh, it is not specifically stated in the Old Testament that a man by the name of Jesus Christ was going to come and die on the cross. Uh, however, there are uh, allusions to it. There are types, things that paint the picture of the, of the coming death and resurrection of the Messiah. What I want to show you today is, will probably be our final installment uh, in this series of me showing you what the Bible says about Jesus Christ coming and dying. What makes this resurrection so important? The resurrection is important because everything that, that Christianity hinges on is the resurrection. Uh, if there is no resurrection, there is no salvation, there is no Christianity. And I know that we are accustomed to celebrating the resurrection on what the world commonly calls as Easter Sunday, where everybody buys their new suits and new hats, and most of the brothers like to wear white for some reason on Easter Sunday, and, and we come to church and we celebrate or commemorate or remember uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But I would submit to you that in the life of the child of God, the resurrection ought to be celebrated every day of your life, every day you get up, ought to be a tribute to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because yes. had he not gotten up from the grave, there'd be no salvation for you or for me. Amen. And so as we look at the, the book of Jonah, as we look at the prophet Jonah, and we look at his life and what he did and what he went through, I want to show you how Jonah lines up uh, with Jesus Christ. Is that all right? And then I'm going to end it uh, in the gospel account to tie the entire bow up, and then we can go and get us some, some chicken and whatever else we got to go get us. Jonah... Um, have, is not some scholars. Y'all might not be going to school before I preach. Uh, some scholars have been debating. There is much scholastic debate that this is an uh, allegory. That this particular book of Jonah is not real. They say that there is really no way that a, a fish or a whale can swallow a man and preserve him for three days and then spit him out uh, on the other side. 
And I've come today to tell you that if God says it happens, yes, I believe yes, that it happens. Yes, but of course you all know that Brother Mims would not just rest there alone. He has to find a way to prove this. Uh -huh. So as I began to dig and research Brother Wilder, I said, how can I prove that this thing has actually happened? Because I believe in what God says. I believe in scripture, but I believe in extra biblical proof to also back it up. It has come to, to my attention that throughout several centuries, it has been discovered uh, that when they have opened the bellies of many whales, they have, they have found entire animals inside the bellies of the whale. There was also one story told about a man uh, who was, who was, who was um, on a ship and he fell into the water. He was swallowed by a whale and the, the captain aimed a cannon at the whale. And the story goes that when he shot the whale, he destroyed the whale and the man came out of the belly. And so whether that is true or not, uh, there are numerous accounts of them finding either humans whole, whether they're alive or dead, and finding dead animals, entire animals, inside the bellies of whales. Y'all follow this? Uh -huh. And so we can prove that this thing has happened just by using extra biblical proof. But now, let's, let's look at the text. So God calls Jonah. Jonah, this is not the first time that Jonah comes on the scene. Jonah comes on the scene back in the book of Kings. He is a prophet, he's known as a prophet, and God has dispatched him to go to uh, and preach uh, in Nineveh to the Assyrians. Uh, he is not interested in preaching to them because they are an, an, an adversary of the Israelites, and eventually they're going to conquer the Israelite, more specifically the northern kingdom of Israel. And so he fears that, Lord, if you send me to preach to these people, these people will, in fact, repent. And I, Jonah, am not interested in these people repenting because I want them to get what's coming to them. Y'all gonna make me preach this morning. Have you ever felt that way about a person? The only thing that gave you solace and comfort is knowing that one day they were gonna get things. <laughs> that you messing with me now, but one day vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and you keep on messing with me, God is gonna get you one day. Oh. And sometimes that's the only thing that'll keep you from killing a person is when you know God's gonna get you one day. But what do you do when you're anticipating God getting the person and God says, I'm not going to tell them. I want you to preach to them. Oh, right. oh, my goodness. I, I, I remember, church, I remember when uh, I, I could not stand my stepfather. Couldn't stand it. You ever can't stand a person so bad that when they eat, you hope they choke? Oh, no. I hope you choke on it. Couldn't stand it. Couldn't stand it for nothing in the world but why. But every night would help me sleep good was knowing that one day he was going to get his. That's right. Oh, yeah. I said, oh, okay, so you, you put me through trouble now, but one day, there's coming a time yes, sir. where God's going to pay you back for all of the mess you put me through. Yes. One Sunday morning, I'm sitting in the pew uh, at church, and, and, and this joke, I almost called him something else, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, came walking down the aisle doing the invitation for the wife, said he wanted to be baptized. All right, all right. My heart Amen. broke. <laughs> I said, but I saw him walking. I said, please don't get saved. Please don't get saved. <laughs> Lord, don't save him. I can't take that. I can't take it. If you save him, that means I gotta treat him right. I gotta love him. He'll, he'll be my brother. Don't save him. <laughs> so they read the card. They said, Mr. Blank Blank has come down front. Uh, he wants to be baptized. I said, Jay. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that one. All right, all right. Now I have to demonstrate yeah, yeah. to this person uh -huh. forgiveness. Yes. I gotta treat him right. Yeah. I didn't want to have to treat him right. I wanted him to get what he deserved. Uh -huh. And so this is how Jonah feels. God is asking Jonah to go and preach to people who he don't want to preach to. And he feels, or oh, if you send me, then I know that they're gonna repent because you're sending me for a purpose. You wouldn't send me to preach to these people if they were going to reject me. So Jonah says, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get on a ship. I'm going to the opposite direction of where you're sending me. He's supposed to go to Nineveh. He gets on a ship and goes to Tarshish, which is probably the southern part of Spain, which is the exact opposite direction that he's supposed to be going in. This is what happens. So he gets on, he gets on the ship, and then all of a sudden, uh, the ship starts experiencing problems. 
Are y'all following me? Uh -huh. This is this is what is interesting. Here's the thing. I said to myself, Jonah, why on earth would you be running from God? Uh -huh. Surely you don't believe that you can outrun God's all-seeing eye. Uh -uh. Are y'all following this? Surely you can't run from the presence of God. As a man of God, as a prophet, you ought to know you can't run from God. Here was what I discovered. He thought that if he ran the opposite direction, maybe God would forget what he sent him to do. Are y'all following this? Yeah. Uh, if he, 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 he must have felt that his gift was only usable in the location where God put him. Oh, I'm going somewhere with this. He must have thought that if I'm not in that place, then I will no longer be the prophet of God. I will only be the man of God. I come today to tell you that it does not matter where you are, your gifts and the mission that God has called you to do is not limited to geography. It does not matter if you're in Kansas City or in Africa. When God calls you to an assignment, you gon' do it. Oh my goodness, people start feeling like if I'm not in a certain place, uh, if, if I'm not in a certain building, or if I'm not in a certain city, then I can't do what God has called me to do. You better learn how to do what God has called you to do, no matter where you are, and understand that it's not limited to your geography. I'm not just a preacher because I'm in this building. I'm a preacher outside of this building. I'm not just a Christian on Sunday in this place, but I'm a Christian on Monday oh, at the workplace. Are y'all following this? Stop believing that what God has for you is limited by geography. You, 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 you have to understand that when God calls you to something, you go answer. You can keep on running all you want. God's going to call you back. Are y'all following me? Church, I didn't want to preach. Not full time. I didn't want to preach. I said, church Christ preachers live too poor. I don't want to do it. That's what I said. So when, when the elders of a congregation came to me and they said, uh, we want you to go to Southwestern, I said to them, I'm not going. I said, no, it's okay. They said, why don't you want to go? I said, because I've, I've heard some Church of Christ preachers tell me how they live. I said, and I grew up struggling. I won't struggle no more. That's right. That's what I said. I don't want to preach because that's, that's, that's going to, uh, that's all right. I know what it's like to not have the water on, the lights on, and, and all that stuff. I don't want to do that all my life. I said, no, it's okay. I said, let me go to school. Let me get a degree in something else. And I still preach, but I need to be able to make some money. You can say amen if you can. Amen. So I decide that I'm going to Georgia State, and I go there. Get into the J. McRobson College of Business, and that's where I want to be. Because I want to make some money. I'm tired of being poor. Y'all don't hear me. Don't hear me. <laughs> too many rich people here. Too many rich people here. <laughs> Y'all got too much money. I, I don't want to ever have to deal with my water being cut off again. Y'all follow this? And, and, and it's so, and God, and this is the thing about God. Y'all ready for this? Y'all come, uh -huh. come here. God will let you run. He'll let you run. But only for so long. You can run, but you can't hide. And so I decide I'm going to go there, and then while I'm there, my cousin is king. And then I have to go to the funeral. And while I'm at the funeral, I'm reading his obituary, and I discover that my cousin wanted to be baptized and saved right before he was king. He didn't make it. He didn't make it. It was in that moment that I realized that it didn't matter how much money I made. Didn't matter if I ever got the house I wanted or I drove the car I wanted. What mattered was that folk heard the gospel of Jesus Christ before the end of their life. Are y'all following this? That's what mattered to me. And what I discovered is that through preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, God has made sure that food has always been on the table. I yeah, never amen. had to worry yes, about it. God has made sure my life stayed on and, and my water came. The thing I was worried about, God took care of anyway. Yes. And I'm coming there to tell you that if you will quit running, God will stop having to tear your ship up. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. So, 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 this one, so, so, so Jonah is on the ship. He's hiding from God. I'm going somewhere with this. He's hiding from God. He said, he tells the men, I'm trying to outrun the presence of God. He said, I'm trying to get from the presence of God. So he gets on this ship, and so God, uh, go ahead and read from the part of verse number uh, number four. Read that. He gets on the ship. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. Oh, watch this, watch this. Now, now, Jonah. Now, wait, I'm going to teach for a second, then I'm going to preach. 
So Jonah gets on the ship, goes down to the bottom to go to sleep. Read the verse again. But the Lord has been out a great the word on the sea. The Lord sends a great wind on the sea. Now with me? The word sin means to hurl, to throw. Jonah is on the boat, brother Wiley, down in the bottom. God starts throwing wind at him. God starts hurling storms at him. He's throwing storms so that they'll wake up. And, and the ship now is being tossed to and fro because God is throwing storms. God is throwing storms because he's trying to outrun God. And God needs to wake him up. So God says, since you're sleeping, I've devised a plan to wake you up. Since you're running from me, you're running from doing what I want you to do, so I'm going to make sure you run into a storm. And it could be that you're running into storms because you keep trying to outrun the presence of God. You can't run from God. When God has something for you to do, God said, I'll tell everything in my way to make sure that I get to you. Even if it means I have to throw storms at you. Yeah. Sometimes people believe that they're going through a storm because of something that they've done. I've come to tell you that's not always the case. It could be that God just wants to get your attention and you're not paying your attention. You're sleeping while God is trying to wake you up. Isn't it amazing that for most people, when they fall away from God, they come back when they're in a storm. God is trying to use the storm to wake you up. You've been asleep for far too long. You've been running for far too long. And God says, I tell that boat to pieces if it means you're going to wake up. Yes. Oh, church, this, this blessed me because I discovered and I realized very quickly uh, that if you're tired of getting your boat torn up, just quit running. Yes. You keep running and God has to bring you right back to the place where you were all alone. But now you've gone all the way around the world and you're floating on planks of wood because he's been trying to tear your boat up to get your attention. Uh -huh. This is what happened. So go ahead and read. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea uh -huh. so that the ship was about to be broken up. Uh-huh. Then the sailors were afraid, uh -huh. and every man cried out to his God, uh -huh. and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea. Uh, so, so watch this now. Now, every man cries out to his own God. The problem is they're crying out to idol gods. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, go ahead and read. Go ahead and read. Go ahead and read. To lighten the load. Uh -huh. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship. Uh -huh. Had lain down and was fast asleep. Ooh, y'all ought to see Jesus. Y'all ought to see Jesus. Y'all ought to see Jesus. Yeah, this isn't the first time uh, that somebody is going to be sleeping at the bottom of a ship when a storm arises. You, you ought to see Jesus in that moment. You all remember in, in what is it, Mark chapter 4, uh, when Jesus is, uh, is it sleeping on the ship, and they went to him, they said, Master, care if not that we perish. Are y'all seeing this? I want y'all to see this. So they come down to where Jonah is, and he says, Jonah, how could you be sleeping at a time like this? Go ahead and read. So the captain came to him uh -huh. and said to him, what do you mean, sleeper? Uh -huh. Arise, call on your God. Uh -huh. Perhaps your God will consider us. Now, now, I love this. He says, now, he said, you sleeping. We all calling up on our gods, and our God not working. So he said, wake up and call on your God. Watch what Jonah says to it. Go ahead and read. So that we may not perish. Uh, we're not trying to die, Doc. You need to call your God. Go ahead and read. And they yes. said to one another, uh -huh. come let us cast lots. Now, come let us cast lots. Go ahead and read. That we may know for who caused the okay, trouble now, 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 I got to work with this. I got to work with this. got to work with this. They said, now, let us cast lots to see who it is that's causing us this trouble. Now, uh, it's amazing. Now, watch this. They're going to cast the lot, and the lot is going to fall upon Jonah. How is it? that the lot falls upon Job. You have men who are idolatrous worshipers, like idol worshipers, casting lots, trying to determine who's causing the problem. You have Jonah who's serving the right God and, and the only God, and it happens that, that the lot falls on Job. It's because God made the lot fall on Jonah. Yes. Let me prove it. Give me Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 33. 
Proverbs 16, verse number 3. Let, let me show you this. Let me show you this. It's, it's amazing. I bet you Jonah probably thought he was safe. They cast it like no way in the world that they serve gods that are real. And so I know that when they cast this line, this line not going to follow me. No way. Not possible. I don't believe it. So Jonah's probably standing there looking at them jokers, casting the line, and it falls on him. And I bet Jonah goes, what in the... Your God's not real. Proverbs 16, verse 33. What does the Bible say? The lot is cast into the, the lap. The lot is cast into the lap. Read. But it's every decision is from the Lord. But every decision of the lot is from the Lord. Y'all follow this? That means that, that Jonah is outed by his own God. Y'all follow this? God's using other people who don't even know him to out Jonah. Oh my, are you finished? You ever have something, you ever said something you shouldn't have said and the person who's not a Christian say, I thought you were a Christian. <laughs> God will use people who don't even know him to pull you out of the closet. Are y'all following this? Yeah. And so the lot is cast, and Jonah is given up by his own God. And the lot is cast into the lap, and his every decision is from the Lord. They cast the lot, and God grabs the lot and says, let me, let me make sure it falls right down on Jonah. I want it to be no kind of questions about it, whose fault it is, this is, so that they have to make a decision. Are you going to lose the boat, or are you going to save yourself? Are y'all following this? Yeah. Okay, so go back to it. So this is what happens. Go back to Jonah. Go back to Jonah. So they cast lot. Jonah is given up. He's out by his own God. So watch this. I'm trying to get to the preaching point. Watch this. Now go ahead and read. Then they said to him, uh -huh. Please tell us, uh -huh. for whose cause is this trouble upon us? Uh -huh. Read. What is your occupation? Uh -huh. And it's, where do you come from? Hold on, man. We need to know stuff about you. What, what do you do and where'd you come from? <laughs> so we didn't have this trouble before you came along. Are you following this? Go ahead and read. What is your country? What, and what people are you? What country are you from and who are you? What, what people are you? Go ahead and read. So he said to them, uh -huh. I am a Hebrew. I'm a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord. And I fear the Lord. Read. The God of heaven. The God of heaven. Who made the sea. Who made the sea. And read. the dry land. And the dry land. This is funny because Jonah knows exactly who it is. And he knows why he's going through this. Are y'all seeing this? He, Jonah, it's not that Jonah is confused. He know why he's in this predicament. And I have a lot of folk who come to me and say, Brother man, my life is just not going right. And then I have to say, I know why you're in this predicament. You. Are you following this? Sometimes we like to blame God for stuff that happens when it's in our control. I don't know why this happened to me. Why did I lose everything? Because you drunk it all up. Why'd she leave me? Because you were cheating. <laughs> oh, you helping me in here. Oh, not helping me in here. Why won't my children talk to me? Because you didn't make time for them when they were growing up. Yeah. Are y'all following this? Yeah. It's not always about why is this happening to me, but why am I doing this to myself? Right. Go ahead and read. He know who it is. Go ahead and read. I'm trying to preach. Go ahead and read. Then the men were exceedingly afraid uh -huh. and said to him, Why have you done this? Uh -huh. Read. For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. Now, now, they knew already before he ever got on the boat. He said, I'm running from God. Go ahead and read. How because they he had told them. Because he told them. They got on the boat and Jonah said, I'm running from God. And they said, well, come right on in. <laughs> Are y'all seeing this? We go and read. Then they said to him, uh -huh. what shall we do to you uh -huh. that the sea may be calm for us? Uh -huh. read. For the sea was growing more tempestuous. Uh -huh. read. And he said to them, uh -huh. pick me up and throw me into the sea. So he says to them, now, now, pick me up and just throw me into the sea. This will stop the boat from, from being torn apart. Y'all should see Jesus in this moment. In order to save the folk on the ship, uh -huh. Jonah is offering to sacrifice himself. Are y'all seeing this? So Jonah says, the way you're going to be saved is by offering me up. Just throw me over. 
the men decide that they don't want to do this. They said, we don't want to do this. We don't want to throw you overboard. So the text says they row harder to make it to land. Well, they can't make it to land because this is not an ordinary storm. God is throwing the storm at them. Are y'all following this? God says, I'm going to keep throwing this storm until you get it, until you listen, until you pay attention, until you do what I want you to do. And I've come this morning to tell you, if you're still in the storm, God is going to keep throwing the storm at you until you do what God wants you to do. Amen. So they decide, you know, we, we, we need to throw them off. We finally, they're going to throw him off. Church, this is a lesson for everybody in this room. What's the lesson, Brother Preacher? You need to learn when you need to throw some people off your boat. You're going to have to learn that when it comes to survival, every now and then, you have to shout man overboard. Every now, you can't allow people who are not interested in the God you serve to stay on your boat and, until it sinks. So you follow me? Yes, you can't allow people Amen. who don't care nothing about the God you serve to continue to sink your ship. Every now and then, you got to tell that joker, look, you got to get off the boat. It's going to be me and you, and right now, it's going to be me. This is every man for himself. And as long as I got you in the boat with me, I'm telling God, I I agree with what you're doing, so now I'm going to have to stop the boat, because you got to get off of y'all following this. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. sisters, sisters, sisters. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some no good folks. Men, you got to kick right on off the boat. Are y'all following this? Y'all, no matter if I, I got to be real, there's some jokers. You got to say, look, you're not going to stay up in my house no more, eating my food, drinking up all my stuff, running up my life. You got to get off this ship because my ship is sinking as long as you on this boat. Y'all follow this? Y'all yeah. know I just keep it real. I'm going to tell you like it is. I ain't got no issues with it. Brothers, the same way. Every now and then, you got to get off my boat. Are y'all following this? Yeah. Every now and then, you may have some kids that's, that's eating up all your food, won't get out, won't grow up, won't get a job, won't get to your place. Kick them off the boat to Yes, sir. <laughs> Are y'all following this? Yes. Because you can't allow the boat to sink and you go with them because somebody that want to follow what God wants them to do. Right. Every now and then you got you to gotta shout man overboard. You got to pick up. This is what happens. This is what happens. Let me, let me, let me, let me wind it down. They decide, because I want to get to my preacher point. They decide we got to throw him overboard. They take Jonah. Jonah, first they prayed to the Lord. They said, Lord, we don't put this man's blood on our hands because they know they think this is killing him. This will kill him. They picked Jonah up, throw Jonah overboard. Now, at the moment, ooh, I love this. This is what I want you to do. I want you to read chapter 2, verses 1 and down, and then come back and read chapter 1, verse 17. Read all the two? Yeah, read all the two. Not all the two. Read about one through like five or something. I want you to see what happens to Jonah. Watch this. Go ahead and read. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, Jonah, uh -huh. his God, out of the fish his belly, uh -huh. and said, I cried uh -huh. by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, uh -huh. and he heard me. Uh -huh. read. Out of the belly of hell cried uh -huh. I, uh -huh. and thou heardest my voice. Uh -huh. Go ahead and read. For thou hast cast me into the deep. Uh -huh. In the midst of the sea, uh -huh. and the floods can pass me about. Uh -huh. Read. All the billows and thy waves pass over me. Jonah is describing what happened to him after they threw him over. Watch this. Read. Then I said, uh -huh. I am cast out of thy sight. Now, now, wait a minute now. He was running from the presence of God. And now he's upset that he was cast out of the sight of God. Are y'all seeing this? What kind of sense does it make to be running from God's presence and get mad when he's out of your sight? Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to show you Jesus. I'm going to show you Jesus. Go ahead and read. Yet I will look again uh -huh. for thy holy temple. Uh -huh. The waters can pass me about, uh -huh. even to the soul. Uh -huh. The death closed around me. Uh -huh. The weeds were wrapped about now, my now, head. Now, wait a minute now. When they threw him overboard, he sinks so far down that the weeds cover him. Y'all see how far down he goes into the water? He's down there, isn't he? Yes. He all the way down there. He's, he's so far down, he says that I'm in the belly of hell. Yes. When he says hell, he means Sheol, the place where the dead go. Jonah has counted himself dead. He said, there's no way I'm going to come this far down and make it through this. Now read chapter 1, verse 17. 
Now the Lord had prepared a great fish. Now the Lord prepares a great fish. To swallow up Jonah. Now Jonah is all the way at the bottom of the ocean. He's counting himself dead. But God prepares a fish. Are y'all seeing this? But he doesn't prepare the fish until Jonah is all the way down at the bottom of the ocean. And then the text says prepares. Hebrew says appointed. God set a fish aside and said don't get it until he hits rock pop. Now some of you are not gotten back to the top yet because you had hit rock bottom. And God said I'm going to let you fall until a fish, but the fish can't grab him until he's all the way down. Are y'all seeing this? And so now he's all the way down. The fish grabs him and he's in the belly of the fish. Are y'all seeing this? Now watch what Jonah does. Watch what he does. Now go back up to chapter 2 and start at verse number 2. What's the Bible say? And, and says, I uh-huh. cried for uh-huh. reason. Okay, breathe. Of mine affliction uh-huh. unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And he heard me. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell. Out of the belly of hell, read. Cried I. Uh-huh. And thou heardest my voice. Uh-huh. Read. For thou hast cast me into the deep. Uh-huh. In the midst of the sea. Uh-huh. And the floods compassed me about. Give me verse 4. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Uh-huh. Yet I will look again toward the holy temple. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Mm. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. He's in. When he's praying this prayer, he's in the belly of the fish. He says, I'm going to look again to the temple. Don't y'all miss this? Don't you miss this? Don't you miss this? He's in the belly of the fish. And he turns himself toward Jerusalem. He turns the stomach of the whale into the steeple of the temple. Y'all follow this? All right. He turns his three days and three nights in the belly of the well into a praise session. And he starts praising and praying inside the fish. Yes. What does this tell me, preacher? This tells me no matter where you are in life, you always got room to turn yourself to God and start praising. You better learn how to turn some stuff into a temple. You better learn how to be in your car and turn it into the temple. Learn how to be in your closet and turn it into a temple. Y'all gonna make me preach this morning. Oh, y'all gonna make me preach now. Now, I love, I love this because God sent something to get him that is disgusting, Lionel. It is disgusting to have to be in the belly of a whale. And and now, the text says that when, in verse number 10, verse number 10, chapter 2 and verse number 10, once Jonah decides, y'all better stay with me, once he decides that he's going to follow God, y'all with me? God speaks to the whale, or the fish, and says, uh, regurgitate Read verse 10. Chapter 2, verse number 10. Watch what happens. And the Lord spake unto the fish. He spake unto the fish. Go ahead and read. And it vomited out and Jonah. It, 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 Jonah. Went it, went out. it vomited. <laughs> it regurgitated. It vomited. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to understand just what Jonah was. <laughs> Bro, preacher, why are you making this point? Because some translations of the Bible say that the whale or the fish spit Jonah. Uh-huh. If he Spit Jonah. He's in the mouth. He can't be saved if he's in the mouth of the fish. Because the fish is going to open his mouth and swallow and, and, and he, he won't be safe in the fish mouth. So he's in the stomach. He's in the belly. And the only way to get out of the belly is that the fish has to vomit him out. Which means that when the fish vomits, he's coming out covered in whatever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever the fish had in his stomach, y'all see this? It might be gross. It might be nasty. It might be disgusting. But if it'll save me, it preach. It might not be the most ideal situation, but God said you're protected if you're there. 
and I'd rather be in the belly than in the mouth because I'm, I, I'd rather God save me. I don't, I don't, Lord, if I have to be uncomfortable but I'm safe, I'm okay with that. If I have to be covered in some stuff I don't want to be covered in. If I have to be in a place I don't want to be in, as long as I'm safe and secure from all along, I'm okay with being in this situation. It's not about Jonah being comfortable. It's about Jonah being safe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so this is what happens. So the whale vomits him. Vomits him out. It has to spit him up. And I'm so glad that when I was running from God, I'm glad that God chose to insulate me. I'm glad that he chose to incubate me. So that when I'm at a place in my life where I've been running, God says, I know how to keep you still. Yeah. What I got to do, Lord? Lord said, I'm going to put you somewhere where you never thought you'd be. I'm, you never thought you'd be in the belly of a whale, but it's in the belly of the whale that you came to your senses. Are y'all following this? Uh, yes, and I would just hope and pray that for everybody in this room who yes. finds yourself in an uncomfortable, dark, cold place, you understand that you're not there because God does not like you. You're there because God loves you and yes. God wants to use you. And the only way he can do it is to protect you from some stuff. And sometimes he has to protect you from yourself yes. because if he let you roam, yes. you keep running until you couldn't run no more. And God said, but if I insulate you in a place and you're covered in slime and filth, you'll come to your senses. So watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. He's there, church. Are you ready for this? For three days. Well. And three nights. Are y'all with me? Now, while he's in there, he is, he feels that he's separated from God. He says, you cast me out of your sight. If you might remember when Jesus is on the cross, he yes, says, Father, yes, sir. why hast thou forsaken me? Yes, sir. And God, of course, does not look at the Son, Christ, because he's covered in sins of somebody else. When Jonah is in a place where God is not looking at him because he's covered in his own sins. Are y'all following this? He says, I'm cast out of your sight, but when he comes to his senses, God vomits him out of where he is. Now, I like the term vomit because it is synonymous with what's going to have to happen when Jesus gets up from the grave. Are y'all following this? Jesus, when he comes out of the grave, Jesus is going to have to bust up out of there. Are y'all seeing this? To the point where he then says, oh grave, where is our sting? And oh death, where is your victory? Are y'all seeing this? Watch this. Give me Matthew 12 and 40. Give me Matthew 12 and 40. Let me, let me prove it and take my seat. Watch this. Now, Jonah is going through all of this, church, for several reasons. The one I want to deal with is he's showing us the type of Christ. He's showing us what Christ is going to go through. Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 40. What does your Bible say? For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster. Just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster. Read. So will the Son of Man. So will the Son of Man. Be three days and three nights. Be three days and three nights. In the heart of the earth. In the heart of the earth. Read. The men of Nineveh will stand up. The men of Nineveh will stand up. Read. With great generation at the judgment. With this generation at the judgment. Read. And will be condemned in it. And will be condemned. Read. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. Ooh, so when Jesus comes through some thousands of years later and he needs to compare something to the, something with the people, he needs them to, to get a comparison to see what's going to happen. He, he goes back to something that they remember. That's how I know that this thing had to be real. Because Jesus doesn't say, do you remember the story of when Jonah was in the well? He said, just like Jonah was down in the belly of the well, Jesus speaks about the thing as if it happened, not as if it was a story, but it was real. And Jesus said, just like Jonah was down in the belly of the well, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. So just like the, the well has to vomit Jonah out of his insides, Jesus said, I'm going to be down in the 
belly of the earth and when I get ready to get up, I'm busted out on death. Where is I see grave? Where is I victory? Uh -huh. That's right. Amen. The purpose of what Jonah goes through, church, points us to Jesus. Yes. You see in this points us to Jesus. The more of the story. More of the story. She can't run from God. Amen. I right. think he won't pull you back. Right. Doesn't matter where you are when God has something for you to do. Yeah. He's going to make sure that you do it. Are yeah. oh, y'all following this? Yeah. Yeah. You're tired? Look at that feet. Look at that feet. You're tired of your boat being torn apart? Stop running. You're tired of being shipwrecked? Stop running, church. God has you in an uncomfortable place so you can come to your senses and choose to follow Him. Yeah. It's not into you. It's not until Jonah gets in the belly of the way that he begins to pray to the Lord. He says in, in one of the last stanzas of his prayer, he quotes from Psalm. And he tells the Lord that, that the Lord was basically the author. The salvation. And he says, I'm going I'm to follow you. And after he says that, the next verse is God spoke to the wind. He spoke to the fish, and the fish vomited him out. What's that tell me? It tells me that God has the ability to speak to whatever you're trapped in. Yes. And cause you to come out of it. Yes. Now, here's what people have issue. Here's what people have issue. Sometimes. It's rough coming out. We're yes, looking Lord. for it to be a spit, but God's calling for it to be a vomiting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you don't want to come out because of what we have to go through in order to come out. Mm -hmm. But God is saying, I'm not just going to let it be a spit. You're going to have to come out hard. Mm -hmm. Because after you come out that way, you won't travel that path no more. God said, isn't it too easy to spit you out? You'll go right back to it because you came out too easy. Uh -huh. God now wants you to, to have to expend some energy getting out of this thing. Yeah. And you got to trust God yeah. enough yeah. to believe that no matter how hard it is for you to come out, he can speak to your way. He can speak to your fish. And you come out. Yes. May not be comfortable. It may not be pleasant. You may not be clean. But as long as you come out, yes, that's all that matters. Yes, I could imagine the man who didn't care nothing about the fact that he was dirty. He didn't care nothing about the fact that the burial cloth was on him. As long as he was coming out the grave, he was okay. Yes. And let me tell you something. Too many people come to church trying to be cute. This ain't time for you to be cute. This is time for you to come out. Yes, sir. Time for you to come out. And I don't care how dirty you are when you're coming out. Just get out of it. You see this? Yes. Just get out of it. Hold on. You may not be ready just shit. Jonah had to do that for three days and three nights. Y'all see in this? Three days and three nights. Now, watch this. Now, let me give you this and then I'm, then I'm done. Now, this does not mean that he was there for 72 hours. This is, this is not the way they reckon time. The reckoning of time in the Jewish day, according to Luke chapter 11 and verse number 19, was not 24 hours, but 12 hours. Jesus says, are there not but 12 hours in a day? They reckon time based upon 12 hours. So what happens in Christianity is people give up.
because they look at the 72 hours and feel like that's too long to wait. When God has not called you for 72 hours, he's calling you for 36. But you'll never know if you don't commit to staying there until you come out. Don't give up on God. No, sir. He is a God who specializes in resurrection. Yeah. Are y'all seeing this? Yes. I just wanted you to get this this morning. It may not be the most shouting sermon that I preach, but, but I wanted you to really get it for you to understand oh, that God can and will bring you out of dead situations. Yes, sir. That's the whole purpose. Jonah was supposed to be dead. To go back far down. He was supposed to be dead. That's why he said, I'm in the belly of hate. Right in the middle of it. Foreshadowing what happened to Jesus when he died on the cross. Down in the middle of death. And it shows the power of God when he can call you out from that far down. And breathe new life back in. Yes. Jonah said the weeds come for me. He was down at church. And let me tell you, let me say this to you. To all of the people who feel like you're too far, you're too, you're too gone, you're too far beyond God's safety. If God can call Jonah that far down, let me tell you something. You're not down far enough where God arms came. Make it fly. Make it fly. The devil wants you to believe that you've done too much. But I serve a God who knows how to go down in the hell and get you. Yes, sir. Ooh, that's why David said, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. Yes, sir. Even when I'm when I'm in hell, God said, I'll reach right down and get you. Yeah. Just come on. If you hear this one. And you've been running from God for a long time. It's time for you to stop running. How much more stuff does God have to tear up before you get the message? How many more storms will he have to throw at you before you quit running? It's time for you to stop running. And you're going to do just what Jonah and Jesus did. You're going to go down in the watery grave. Baptism. Come up again. A new creature. That's what you're going to do. Baptism is a form of death. When you come out of the water and you rise to do this over life, old things have passed away. All things have become new. That's what happens when you do what John and Jesus did. And then when you come out of the water, church, what you're going to do is, anyway, some people believe that we are really hard on this water stuff. And I'm only hard on it because Jesus Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, and I understand that it's not the power does not lie in the water. Mm -hmm. It lies in your obedience right. and submitting to what Jesus said for you to do. Yes. I remember when I got baptized. I remember how I felt when I did. I felt like a new person. God had given me another chance. Yes, this morning, if you need God to give you another chance, you do it. Even if you're all the way in the belly of hell, God can reach down and get you. You're not the unsafe. You've not done too much. God will do that for you. All you have to do is come and trust Him. Jail's gonna sing a song, and you can come on while we sing this song. Come oh, on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody's too far down. Too far down to get a God to bring you out. He can do a church. He can do a church. He can do it. Sometimes. 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 